We're going to start off talking about $40 silver because we need an optimistic number like that. But is there a chart showing us in no uncertain terms that we will get $40 silver? We'll talk about that. But there's some bad news connected with that as well. Are we headed to a depression? Not a soft landing, not a recession, a full-blown depression. And what would that mean for your precious metals? My precious metals. But you're, you're worried about yours, our precious metals. We'll talk about that. What about Russia and gold? Got an interesting little bit of information that you might just want to hear regarding Russia and gold. But let's get started talking about $40 silver. My Valentine gift to you. I had a chart here I'm going to show you in one second. came from our friend Michael Quick. Thank you, Michael, for providing this to us. He says, Ron, are you, this is the bad news. We're going to, basement dwellers, we're going to get the bad news out of the way first, okay? I've always been that way. Get through the hard stuff, then we're going to have fun. So the bad news is, are you ready for $18.50 silver? No, Michael, we're not ready for that. Take a look at this chart. I also see... After it goes down, it goes boom, zoom, to the moon. Boom, zoom, to the moon. That's our friend Michael Quick. It's a monthly chart of, show, of silver is signaling as one of its high probability outcomes. So I want to show you this chart. It's from 2014 through 2024 through today. And it shows the monthly close in silver. But then it shows what are called Bollinger Bands. Let me get that up so you can see it, okay? So that shaded area that you see, that's silver over the last 10 years, and those are called Bollinger Bands, if I have that correct. I used to kind of study that technical analysis stuff. It's all statistical. But what that chart shows, according to Michael Quick, is that we could go, could go down here into that 19, 1850 range, but soon thereafter, and that's about the rest of this year and a little bit into 2025 that we could see a major explosion in the silver price. And that's what we want to talk about. We know, and we're going to touch on some new reasons why silver in particular is so undervalued right now, incredibly undervalued that, Hey, I mean, let's, let's think about this guys. Hey, Next year on Valentine's Day, 2025, are we going to be sitting down here in the basement one year from now? Because you know I'm going to put out a new piece of content. I'm still back here. Hey, there's Fortuna Silver behind me <laughs> every day for the rest of my life. So in one year, are we going to be down here talking about $40 silver? What do you think? Huh? Do you think that in Valentine's Day 2025, we will get $45 silver? If you do, type, I want you to type the whole word, Y-E-S, right? I am, I'm doing it. Can you do it? I think we'll have $40 silver next year on Valentine's Day. I, don't, I just feel that, like a loving feeling in my heart, similar to that feeling I get when I think about Susie. Many of you know Susie. She's my sweetheart. She's my wife. This is actually Susie's house. I don't think she's on the live stream right now, so I can say this, and I'm not going to tear up, although I will, because we love each other so much. Happy Valentine's Day, Susie. You are absolutely the best wife, and I'm not going to cry. I cry when I talk about my dad, my mom, and I'll cry when I talk about Susie, but wonderful woman. I don't have anything for her for Valentine's Day. This is what I got her last year, and then I stole it from her. It's a three ounce silver heart. <laughs> anyway, I hope you have a sweetheart today. And if not, you got friends here in the basement, right? I'll be your sweetheart for today. Where was I? I got to get back. Every time I start to get choked up, I lose my train of thought. My train of thought. Okay. Uh, I'm just laughing about yesterday. Yesterday was a painful day for precious metals investors, right? Why? We know why gold and silver went down, because the inflation numbers were great. We're not going to rehash all that, okay? But, but, are you curious? Is silver manipulated? How much silver do you think was traded yesterday during that 15-minute, 30-minute period where silver got clobbered? Probably close to somewhere around 10% of the annual mine production. Actually, I heard Rick Rule say last night that oftentimes, I want to get this right, on the, on the COMEX exchange, some days, 
you'll have 200 times the silver that's available for delivery, right? That's that registered category at the COMEX that's only 42 million ounces. On some days, we'll have as much as 200 times that amount traded on the COMEX. That's almost a whole year's worth of silver production. Global, all these people, stop for a second. Okay, it's sweetheart day. There are people all around the world right now, as we're sitting here having a fun time talking, but there are people in mines, underground, people covered in dirt and dust, digging, digging, digging to get silver and gold out of the ground. They only pull up about 850 million ounces a year, and there are some days where that amount is traded in one day on the COMEX, and you're going to tell me? That's a farce. That's not fair. That doesn't make any sense, does it? Right? And you're going to tell me that that price is accurate that they're giving us on the COMEX? I've got a great video coming out this afternoon with the Silver Hermit where we dig in specifically to all the ways that the COMEX and proof that the COMEX very likely, very likely has manipulated the price of silver. And that's good news for us because when it breaks free, when market forces prevail, and they will, Okay, they will, basement dwellers. You can only fight gravity for so long. An airplane can only stay in the air, even if it's getting refueled for so long. And that's what I would say. The you know the price manipulation of the metals has been like like an airplane that keeps getting refueled in the air, but eventually it's got to come down for mechanical reasons, market reasons, gravity reasons, and that's likely exactly what we'll see with the silver price. At some point, it happened with uranium. Remember two years ago, uranium, oh, nobody wanted to talk about. Now uranium's like the hottest metal on the planet, right? Because right, the price was held down artificially low, below the price of production for so long. And then guess what happened? Market forces overtook it. <laughs> I can whisper sweet nothings to you today because it's Valentine's Day. Market forces prevail. That's the way the world works, right? There's certain things we cannot deny, okay? Um, one final point on that. Eventually, okay, this price manipulation that has gone on for decades, those manipulators, I was talking to a buddy of mine last night who used to work at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. He said it. He said, these guys don't care if they're making money as the price goes up or the price goes down. It makes no difference whatsoever. Eventually, the manipulation of the price could turn in our favor, meaning the traders could say, hey, it's, the silver is going to go up, 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 up and get moving. And you know what happens then. Let's just quickly review the Ron's Basement Silver Rule of eight times, eight times the demand, right? Because when the price starts to move, yeah, instead of one in a hundred people, you got four in a hundred people that are wanting to buy silver. And those four people, right, that's four times as much money. They're buying twice as much because us silver investors are dum-dums. <laughs> not you, not me, not you, not me. But the average, those other three people that join us are dum-dums. They don't buy silver now when it's cheap and the premiums are super low. No, they'd rather wait. They'd rather wait. Like It's like buying a car during the C-19 crisis, right? You're paying over sticker price. They'd rather wait till the price is going up. And as a double whammy, the premiums are going up. And then, so you get the four people buying twice as much. That's eight times as much money. That's a beautiful day for the silver market. Will it happen for sure? I don't know. Don't make any financial decisions based on anything I say. Don't forget, we are going to do the giveaway also about halfway through the live stream, okay? But if you want to get your hands on some silver, gold, or platinum right now, go check out Pimbex. They did donate a beautiful 10-ounce Geiger silver bar to the giveaway. You'll see it here in a few minutes, okay? And there's 15 more ounces of silver. But if you want to make sure you're going to get silver in the mail, because you can trust Pimbex, right? You can go to their website, pinbex.com. What you'll find, but I want you to discover this for yourself, is that they have the most competitive prices. Huh? They got great selection 
And if you read reviews, like I did before I bought from Pimbex, before they ever sponsored me in the basement, you're going to find that they're a company you can trust, but you got to find that out for yourself. But you got to go to P-I-M-B-E-X, Pimbex. Com. I love to say it. I love to tell you, you will get more metal for your money. Thanks, Pimbex. I love that they're a sponsor because I believe in them, just like I believe in First Mining Gold and Fortuna Silver, a gold development company and a producer of gold and silver. You can check out First Mining Gold at firstmininggold.com. You can check out Fortuna at Fortuna silver.com. Those are both stocks that I own. I'm not giving financial advice. Stocks are risky. There's great opportunity for price appreciation, right? But everything, any stock anywhere is risky. Do your own due diligence. I believe right now the precious metal mining stocks offer a value opportunity like none other in time. And it's interesting. It's interesting when you look at what's going on, the relationship right? The ratio, but the relationship between, let's say, the price of gold still hanging close to $2,000 and the gold miners index, the Huey index, the gold bugs index, it's like the Huey index to gold is like 0.1. The Huey index, the gold bugs, whatever you want to call it, is about 200 and gold's about 2,000. It is like near an all-time low. One of two things needs to happen, right? The average on that ratio is around 0.25-ish range from what I could see. Either the price of gold will continue to go down, and if gold mining stocks stay where they are, that ratio will come back in line, or the gold mining stocks could go up. It'll be interesting. It's an interesting market in which we live. It's kind of a synthetic, everything's make-believe fairyland. If you do you do you feel that way? Like, you know, we're living in a monetary mirage. Right? We're not living, we're living in a synthetic world thanks to the Federal Reserve. Thank you very much, Jerome. And that's why the Federal Reserve has become more of a public relations firm than a bank. <laughs> I mean, you know, they're like the headline news. They move the markets. We are unfortunately, if we're going to choose to value silver and gold in U.S. dollars, we are at the uh, we are at the the, the 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 control under the spell of the Fed. We talk about this, so isn't it smarter if you are going to hold physical silver or physical gold? Think about it as ounces of metal. Think about compare your com compare an ounce of silver to. I don't know how much milk you can buy with it, how much gasoline you can buy with it. Because if you do that over a long period of time, you will know, you will see that silver absolutely holds its value. I am all over the place this morning. Thank you guys for being here. Please give this a thumbs up. We're almost to 100. I will ring the bell 10 times when we get to 100 thumbs up. So thank you. Seriously, it's a big deal when you join me here in the basement. We call ourselves basement dwellers, right? We love to talk about silver, gold, and dig into what's really, not the headline news, what's really going on. So please come back. It's free to subscribe. I'll never charge you. Thank you, Clifton, for the super chat, my friend. Thank you for the compliment. That goes a long way. It really does, okay? And it goes a long way when you decide to show up here. My intention is to put out a piece of content every day for the rest of my life. You got a friend for life, and you can make other friends here too. Trust me, please subscribe to the channel. And of course, the super chats are always super appreciated. They do go a long way to help support the channel and make all this possible, along with our three sponsors, Pimbex, First Mining Gold, and Fortuna Silver. Now, let's talk about Let's put a positive spin on what's happened so far this year for silver and gold. We know the silver price, the gold price, and the precious metal mining stocks. We know what's gone on. But let's take stock of what happened. And are we, you know, we're what? We're mid-February, okay? We're, we're only, what, 10% through the year at this point? Maybe 11% through the year? Let's 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 uh, let's give ourselves a little pat on the back because even though we've got gold fighting, we're gonna say two thousand because we're gonna look at the futures market. Silver twenty two ish per ounce. We have not been decimated, and let's talk about the four big blows. You've been hit. 
You've been hit incoming, right? Incoming. Okay, the silver and gold market, you've been under attack. Okay, so let's talk about what happened. Number one, and we'll have a little fun. We had the fourth quarter GB GDP numbers, which in no uncertain terms showed us that Bidenomics is working, right? We had blowout recreational vehicle sales. We talked about that ad nauseum, right? Americans can't afford to buy houses. So now they're buying RVs and living in the luxury of their mobile RVs. That was bad for the price of silver and gold. The next thing we got were the January jobs numbers. And if you heard, now that it's been a couple, like unbelievable, 350,000 jobs created in January, that when you take out seasonal adjustments, I've heard that actually the, the real number of jobs in January was actually a loss. I heard numbers as high as 2 million, okay? A million, 2 million, if you look at the real numbers of jobs that were created or lost in January. But nonetheless, when they seasonally adjusted, they put a lot of seasoning in their seasonal adjustment, right? Uh, the, num the numbers came out to look unbelievable, which of course was a body blow, body blow for the silver and gold price. Real money, right? Not unicorn fart dust, not paper. No, real, real money. Imagine that, right? Okay. The next thing we had was the Fed meeting. Oh, all 12 of the Fed governors got together with their old friend, Jeremy Powell. And I almost forgot, I got to ring the bell 10 times. Listen up, here comes the bell. A couple extra because it's Valentine's Day and you, Buttercup, are a sweetheart, okay? Now, they had a Fed meeting. We know what happened with that. They came out being a little more hawkish than they usually were, and that was a headwind for the price of silver and gold. Body blow, another body blow. And then the icing on top was yesterday, uh, the inflation numbers came higher than expected. Any news, okay, this, this, is, this, is, this is how strong you are as a silver and gold investor, right? You know, you buy it to protect yourself, protect your wealth, right? I'm not giving financial advice, but that's why I like precious metals. I, mean, I like 5,000 years of history, not 50 months or five years or even 50 years. I like 5,000 years. And I like the fact that central banks are buying it hand over fist, right? Record levels of central bank buying, okay? We know, right? But, but we got hit with more body blows, and but we've survived. You've survived, right? And the price, you know, I, I'm sad. I'm sad. We all get sad, mad. Are you mad? Are you sad? Right? But I, I don't like the fact that in the on the on the spot market, gold got below two thousand dollars. But, but it's the big picture, right? What's the difference between two thousand and nineteen ninety? Whatever the price might be right now. We have hung strong in a in a barrage of attacks, and we are going to continue to hang strong, and we're going to do that together, and we got brighter, brighter days ahead. You want to hear about a depression? Let me have a drink of water, and then we are going to talk about a depression. If you think, well, it, 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 do you think that it's possible, just possible, okay, hold on one second. And then I want to get your opinion on something. But do you think it's possible that we could have a depression? Nobody's talking about that. They want to talk about soft landings, right? We hear that all the time. Oh, we're having a soft landing. You know, we want to, we can hear about a potential for a recession. Isn't it always the things? And I'm not saying I think we are. I'm not predicting, you know, but I think the odds of a depression are significantly higher than anyone is giving uh, attention to, right? I mean, we are living in a fantasy land. We are on fantasy economic island. You know, everything's great. It's like we're on a cruise. We, 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 we booked a cruise with uh, our credit card and we're drunk, right? Everybody's drunk and, oh, everything's great. Oh, we don't, you know, we don't know. Everything's wonderful. When reality hits, you know, when, when things come, when the, when the hens come home to roost, I love that saying, <laughs> when the hens come home to roost, 
we could be in for some serious, serious economic. And I, and I, we forgot about it. we forgot about something. You guys need to you need to do a better job of reminding me. Send me an email when I forget to talk about this stuff. Okay, you can be part of the show. I appreciate your input, basement dwellers. We haven't talked about the lag effect. Remember the lag effect? All those interest rate hikes. That the, the, when the Fed hikes interest rates, it takes six to 18 months for the impact to fully be felt in the economy. I'd say right now, we're just in the maybe in the end of the first third where we start to feel the effects in areas like uh, the real estate, the residential real estate market, the commercial real estate market, right? Businesses that need to, to, um, to, to renew their loans. If you own a business and, and you got a $10 million line of credit from your bank, or you have a $10 million loan, right? Or you issued some bonds. You're just like the US government. Those come due, and unless you have the money to pay it off with most times, it's America, nobody does. We don't pay stuff off, right? You gotta refinance it, renew it, however you wanna say it, right? It comes up for a renewal. And that 4% rate, that the uh, hubcap manufacturing company was paying is now going to become a 10% rate or an 11% rate, right? I mean, it's crazy, okay? And it will feed through and it will affect commercial real estate, businesses, small businesses. It's going to have major impacts. The rates have gone back up, right? I think yesterday we talked about the 10-year bond yields at 10 So we don't talk about the lag effect, but wait, there's more, doesn't it? Isn't it interesting then when you start to think about on top of that, that as of, I believe it was, oh, oh it's going to be March. I thought it was March. It's February, Ron. The month is February. It's Valentine's Day, February 14th. March 11th, the bank term funding program, the bailout that they put in place, the Fed, right? QE. I don't care. I'll call it what it is. It was a bailout. It was money printing. It was whatever that they used to save all the banks during the banking crisis we had less than a year ago. That comes to an end. We've talked about the reverse repo program. The Fed's almost out of all this cash. Delayed QE is what it is. I'll call it what it is. It was delayed QE. They printed too much money during the, the, the health scare, health crisis that we had in 2020. So the Fed took it all in right? And what's called the reverse repo program got to be as big as $2.5 trillion. And over the last year, it's been being fed back into the banks. That's money. It's delayed QE. They're like, oh, we're doing quantitative tightening. Well, no, you're not. Not if you factor in the fact that you're pushing all this other cash back into the economy through the banks and the banks are using it to buy treasuries. Needless to say, the reverse repo program, last I saw, was had gone from $2.5 trillion down to less than $500 billion, and it keeps going lower and lower and lower. That's going to be another, that's another freight train. You know the commercial real estate situation, right? The Xerox building in Washington, D.C., it sold, it sold for like 15%, 15, like 85% lower lower, not 15%, 85% lower than the last time that it sold like 11 years ago or in 2011, 13 years ago. Math, who cares, right? This is America. We don't have to deal with math, do we? No, math doesn't matter. Yes, math does matter. Talk to the people in Venezuela. Am I frozen? No, I'm still here. Can you guys see me? Hello? Somebody give me a five by five. Talk to the people in Turkey. Talk to the people in Egypt. E Egypt. That's a new country. Egypt. <laughs> Egypt. That's like Uruguay in Egypt. Your Egypt. No. Talk to the people in Uruguay probably too. You know, it doesn't. Math matters. Math does matter. Even if you're the biggest country in the world, right? E even the big bully. It takes longer for the big bully. To get the to get the impact, but mathematics matter. MMM. Hey, we gotta please no singing. <laughs> okay, Tom. Well, now you made me want to sing. I was gonna sing. Um, uh, well, anyway. Okay. <laughs> mathematics matter. Oh man, you guys, you threw me for a loop. Great. You know, look what you did to me with that live stream, Mister Shovel, nineteen sixty eight. 
Okay. Mathematics matter. I'm stuck on that point, right? It, so we will have the, the, the day of reckoning to come. Uh, what else? Residential. Nobody's talking about res. Do you own a home? Huh? Buttercup? Do you own a condo? Right? In Florida, maybe? Or some of these places. I mean, around here, it was crazy. In the middle of the armpit of the world, St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> it was crazy how much home values went up. But in places like Florida, California, probably other places too. I mean, are we in for a residential real estate problem? Uh, yeah, you're tooting we are. I believe we are. You know, I, I love my friends. I love my neighbors. And the average person is walking around saying, my house went up. My house doubled in value. Blah, blah. And I'm like, your house didn't double in value. Really, and it just went up in numbers terms because we know we've had huge inflation. But on top of that, baby, I got bad news for you. Until you sell that house and you're at the title company and you got that cashier's check and you take that cashier's check to the bank and then you convert it to silver and gold, <laughs> your house hasn't doubled in value. But, but if we are we are also very likely going to face massive challenges in the residence. Nobody can afford. I got news for you. Your house isn't worth that much, okay? And I hope I'm wrong because, you know, but nobody can afford your house. <laughs> you might think it's worth, I might think my house is worth, let's say, $500,000, okay? But if nobody can afford it, well, then I can't go to the title company and get that cashier's check, right? Who cares anyway? All it means is that the value of your house goes up. That means your property taxes go up. Our, my property taxes has probably gone up $2,000 a year, right? Your home insurance goes up. Everything goes up, 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 up. You're still the same house. It's not like you're getting any benefit from that. Well, my house went up in value. All right. I'm sorry. I digress. Um, where are we? You know what? Let's do the giveaway and then... And then let's talk about some new news about silver, okay, that uh, I just heard last night. And let's talk about, it's very interesting when we hear what Russia, yes, that Russia, Vladimir Putin, is doing with gold. But let's do the giveaway right now. Let me get the, let me get the tray. Oh, it all disappeared. <laughs> Here's what you can win, okay? You got it. Uh, let's see, a 10-ounce Geiger bar that was given to us from Pimbex. We've got two 4-ounce bars from our friend James. These pieces of, uh, of, of constitutional silver were from Coin Shop, Chris. We have five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, Nadir silver bars, and they have uh, consecutive serial numbers. And what else is in there? Is that it? Did I forget something? I forget. Anyway, it's about 25 ounces, give or take a half ounce. Uh, oh, yeah, two uh, silver dollars, a piece silver dollars that are in very nice shape. Look at all that, guys. That's what you can win. Okay, we're going to pick a winner, a random comment from the giveaway video that you all had an opportunity to go to and see who wins all this. Now, I'm going to do it all very transparently. Bear with me. I don't want to knock that over. Hold on here. I need to go to the video, and I'm going to show you everything that we're doing once I get there. All right. Let's see here. All right. Uh, where is it? Here it is. Hold on. What? Hold on. Okay. So if you guys are so good okay. at Amazon FBA, how come you don't just do it all yourself? We're doing the giveaway. Everybody hang on. We're doing the giveaway. Everybody hang on. Valentine's Day 2024. We're having a big Valentine's Day. I'm going to turn the volume off. Okay, guys. So there's the giveaway video. I'm going to copy... I know you trust me, but anyway, RRP9. So I'm going to copy. Hold on. Ugh. 
Hold on. I'm going to copy the address of that video. Okay. Which starts with RRP9. And then we're going to go... And I'll get it up closer for you here when we get there. We're going to go to a program that works really well. YouTube Random Comment Picker. Oh, I almost knocked the table over. All right, and I'm going to paste the URL of that video here. Paste. Okay, there it is. As you can see it, it starts with RRP. And then I'm going to fetch. I like that word. I'm going to not include replies, and I'm not going to allow duplicates. And the comment has to have the word Pimbex in it. P-I-M-B-E-X. I'm going to show you this in one second. Okay. I'm going to press continue. It's loading all the comments. Still loading. <laughs> and we are at 907 people are entered. Okay, so now I'm going to pick a winner. And I'm going to do this so you can see it. I think. Okay. Are you ready? Let's see who won. All right. There it is. I can't read that, but I'm going to read it here in a second. The winner is Unspoken Words 2010. All right. Congratulations. Unspoken Words 2010. You win all of this. I will mail it out to you by Friday. But what you need to do is send me an email. And the email address is in the description of this and every video I put out. Unspoken Words 2010. Hold on, I need to take a picture of that. You'll send me an email and then I will uh, send you a code, a four-digit code, You'll come back to the uh, to this live stream. You can go to my channel, go to press live. There's the recording of this live stream on February 14, 2023. Leave a comment with that four-digit code. That way I'll have confirmation that it's you. Okay? All right. Hold on here. <laughs> we'll be right back, guys. We got more to talk about. Okay. Later. Okay. All right. Hey, congratulations. And thank you to the people that sponsored, donated Jim M, donated those five one ounce bars. Uh, Pinbex donated the 10 ounce bar and Coin Shop Chris donated, Kimberly donated and uh, James B donated. So thank you guys. We will do the next big giveaway will be on the 4th of July. So stay tuned because it's going to be even bigger. I'm shooting for 50 ounce giveaway, maybe more on the 4th of July. Like I said, please stay tuned. Okay, what about silver? This is interesting. Think about all the different things we're told about silver. Oh, you know, it's used in solar panels, it's used in microchips, it's used in cars, it's used in all these different things. But there's one area that we never really talk about which I heard Rick Rule recently say is one of the fastest growing areas of demand for our friend silver. And that is its germicide uh, qualities. Let me read this to you because there's a, there's a huge growth in demand for silver. We know everywhere else, but you know, we talk about $40 silver, $50 silver, and we talk about, you know, low investment demand, obviously. We know the story there. We'll touch a little bit more on that in a second. But silver is also, silver is the most reflective metal on Earth. Silver is the most conductive of electricity on Earth. This is interesting. And then we're going to get into this germicide, which nobody talks about, but was exploding right now. Uh, well, one thing interesting, silver is 
conducts electricity better than any other metal on Earth. It is the base from which the electri- electrical conductivity scale is measured. I think cop- like silver is 100. Copper is like 85. And like aluminum is even lower than that. And what's interesting is... You know, so silver will conduct 100% of electricity, copper only 85%. You know what the byproduct is when copper transports electricity? Heat. I didn't really realize that. That's why a lot of times electrical things like wires even will sometimes feel warm. At least that's the way I understand it. And that was according to our good friend Pat Holland from the Missouri Freedom Initiative. But what about what about what's going on with the germs? Like silver kills germs. Did you know? Did you know? I'm just curious how many people knew this. Silver kills germs. It's a germicide. I don't know the technical reason why, but for some reason, silver will keep you healthy. Did you know? That's why back in the early years, we'll call it, right? Since silver's always been valuable, that's where the term he or she was born with a silver spoon in his or her mouth because the wealthy people back 700, 800 years ago, if they could afford it, would have utensils made out of silver because even back then they had recognized that silver kills germs. So if someone was wealthy, they would say, oh, he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Remember that show Silver Spoons? Many of you are about my age, right? About that rich boy, Ricky Schroeder, I think it was, right? That's where that comes from. But it's an important quality of silver that nobody really pays any attention to, and it continues to grow. Let me read this to you. I put together kind of a little synopsis of, of what's going on in that area. Oh, that's Super Bowl tickets. Hold on. We're almost there. Here we go. This is short, but it's very important about silver. Silver's utility as a germicide is expanding rapidly, finding applications in sanitation, water treatment, and medical fields. It's antimicrobial properties. <laughs> I don't know why. Do you like to hear that? Antimicrobial properties make it effective in combating a wide array of pathogens. I think those are bad things. From bacteria to viruses. Hmm, We haven't had any problems with viruses lately, have we? No. In sanitation, silver-infused products offer enhanced disinfection. That's not that hard of a word. Disinfection. (laughs) ensuring cleaner environments and reduced transmission of diseases. Water treatment facilities utilize silver nanoparticles. You know, I'm going to get back to that. I think I'm going to talk to my trash man, right? He always says, whoopity, whoop, whoop, whoop. I'm going to tell you something. It's good to be friends with your trash man. I'm friends with my trash man and my recycle man and the yard waste man. They're the coolest people around. They're humans and they're doing, I always tell them, I give them Christmas bonus. I'm like, you're doing like one of the most important jobs on the planet, taking all my crap away from me, right? This always pays to be nice. I'm going to, next time I tell them, I'm going to say, with all this trash you're around, whoopity whoop, 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 you need to get yourself like a silver, they make that for surgeons, like clothing, surgery gowns that are infused, the the fabric is infused with, with silver, I don't think my beauty red shirt is infused with silver, but nonetheless, it's interesting, okay? Water treatment facilities utilize nanoparticles nanoparticles to purify water, removing contaminants, contam- contaminants and safeguarding public health. Moreover, silver is increasingly integrated into medical devices and treatments, harnessing its antimicrobial prowess to prevent infections, promote healing, and promote healing. As inva- as advancements continue, silver emerges as a versatile weapon in the fight against micro- microbial threats. Microbial threats. We are threatened by microbes, my fellow basement dwellers. So that's the story there, okay? Uh, exploding. Rick Rule talked about that. It really turned me on. I'm like, you know, right? it's true. Nobody, we talk about There's two areas, like everybody's so focused on solar, 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 solar. And I was talking to one of my 
co-workers last night. He's much younger than me, probably in his mid twenties. Smart guy, very intelligent. And he's like, I get, it. I always want to get a feel for the younger generation. And he's like, we should just do whatever we can to save the environment, solar. And I'm like, you know, there's a lot of silver in solar panels, Matt. <laughs> Don't you know there's there's silver in there. There's silver and all that electric stuff that we need to electrify the planet. Absolutely. Um, but what's the other thing, which is getting a lot of attention also? Here's a little bonus, right? It's curious, right? Curious. We know silver's use for all these antimicrobial purposes, but there's a, a big debate raging right now about how much silver is actually used by the defense industry, not only in the United States of America, although we know we spend more than any other country on defense and healthcare for that matter, but that's a different story, but around the world, right? These critical military pieces of equipment. Some people I'm hearing on, on good word that there's like 500 ounces of silver in each Tomahawk missile, for instance. Right. And when that silver gets used, it's gone forever. So that's another key. There's like some 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 kind of like sleeper areas of demand for silver that nobody's talking about. And don't forget, um, it was Bill Holter who I heard say this. Right. But it's a, it's a known fact that like over over the last three years, we've had 400 million ounces of silver disappear from the, the warehouses of the Comex and the LBMA. And then I heard like 500 million over the last four years. Okay. That's that excess demand, right? People are demanding more silver than is being supplied by mining and recycling. And I know we get tired of hearing it, but they can only plug that hole with excess uh, surplus supplies above ground for so long. And as all these areas continue to expand and and listen up, basement dwellers, because this is super important. When investor demand comes back, and it doesn't have to come back full blown, right? Right now, and I, you, you guys get mad. I know this is not going to make you happy to hear this, but silver is hated. Silver and gold are hated, especially in the West, right? But when that demand does, it doesn't have to be completely hated anymore. And again, I'm, I got to give credit. I'm stealing this from Rick Rule because he's the one I heard it from. But it just, I was like, yes, Rick, yes. If you like Rick Rule, type Rick Rule in the, uh, I like Rick Rule. You know, he's one of the, one of the royalty of the precious metal sector. We don't need it. We don't need it to be loved. We just need it to be a little less hated. You know, um, uh, what's his name? Tucker Carlson was just in Moscow interviewing Vladimir Putin. Okay. And he was, gave a very, I thought, objective interview of Putin. And he talked about how nice Russia was. But one of the key things that we know happened over the last few years is massive sanctions against Russia that was supposed to. But what happened about what happened with gold, right? That has, is super interesting um, in regards to our recognition that gold and silver are universally accepted, the universal the universal form of money. What do we know that happened in the gold market uh, with Russia in particular as they face these massive sanctions? I want to read you some an interesting piece of, of, uh, of data about how Russia has done well and how they've been using gold. Russia has reportedly used gold to evade currency restrictions put in place as part of the economic sanctions levied in the wake of the invasion of Ukraine. So we sanctioned and sanctioned and sanctioned, and they didn't, you know, they needed to do something. Under the sanction regime, Russian banks are prohibited from importing dollars or euros into the country. The ban is enforced by locking Russia out of the SWIFT program, which I didn't know this stands for, the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial telecommunications. Uh, the system enables the banks and other institutions to send and receive financial transactions, blah, blah, blah. And Russia was locked out. Okay. As a result, uh, the banks can, can like stop Russia from conducting business abroad. Okay. But according to a Bloomberg report, Russia has skirted the sanctions and important U.S. 
and, and imported U.S. and EU banknotes into the country through the United Arab Emirates. Let's not forget they are now part of the BRICS, okay, and Turkey, who's not part of the BRICS. With hard currency in the form of dollars and euros, it's much easier for Russia to obtain goods and services abroad through sellers willing to skirt uh, sanctions for cash. Reports compiled by Sayari, a financial intelligence company, found that financial institutions in the United Arab Emirates and Turkey exported more than the equivalent of 82 million euros dollars in UAE Durham into Russia during the first quarter of 2023. The report shows that, that several of the same institutions that shipped hard cash to Russia also imported gold from the co country within a similar time frame. So Russia, hmm, Russia needs some hard currency. What are they doing? They're going back to the universal, right? They're not, they're not trading uh, rubles for the money. No, they're using gold. Think about it. Silver. Think about it, right? We talk about this is so interesting, right? Is the world is unfolding. My buddy Sean is reading this new book by Ray Dalio, like how the world is changing right now, right before our very eyes, is all that is going on, the BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Ethiopia, and the United Arab Emirates. There's 10 BRICS in the wall now, 30 more BRICS that want to get added to the wall, but nonetheless, as they are gaining in power, right, they are moving away from the dollar. De-dollarization, it's not going to happen overnight. Okay, it's not going to, but it's happening. That's the key. Right? And it's going to provide a lot of dollars coming back to the United States. It's going to create a lot of inflation. It's going to create a lot of problems. But the key here is those countries have said they do not want to use the dollar anymore. They told us. That's what Putin was telling Tucker Carlson. That, that's what the Saudis are saying. We'll trade oil for yuan. We'll do whatever. Right? The Iranians, they're all... None of them want to use the dollar. They're tired, in their words, of being kind of bullied, is a simple way to say it, by the U.S. dollar. Sanctions, uh, uh, confiscations, even with so. But this is critical to see in this. Those countries, they don't trust the dollar, right? But they don't trust each other either. So what are they going to default to? They're going to default to real things, things like silver, things like gold. It will get revalued. Who knows if we'll get a gold-backed BRICS currency? Remember that big that big fur, fur that was going on during the summer? We don't know. But it will likely, at some point, by, how do I say this? Market forces will get revalued. The market will overtake, right? When they start, the more they start to, to use gold and use real assets to back their transactions amongst each other, a natural um, uh, result of that will be that we will see, at minimum, a revaluing of gold. Why not, right? I mean, we talk about this. Think about this, right? Gold has always been the world power. What's the first thing that countries do when they invade another country? They get the gold. It always has been that way, right? Gold has always been the world. Now, unless we've turned a page in world history, and I guess that's not completely off the table, right? But nonetheless, right, most likely we are in a situation where gold is going to, how do I say this, regain of uh, what 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 uh, regained the recognition of what it's always been. I got to ring that cowbell. We got 200 thumbs up. Thank you. Basement dwellers, thank you for being here. Thank you for the super chats. Super generous. Don't forget, keep giving us thumbs up. We appreciate that. That helps get the word out to more people. And on top of that, subscribe to the channel. It's free <laughs> as it should be. I'm telling you, if you're ever at a farm store, get yourself one of those cowbells. It is the loudest bell you've ever heard in your life. 
I'm going to have a quick drink of water. I'll be right back, okay? The other quick question I have, when will the fireworks start? We know that we're going into a very contentious election season. Will it be a big nothing burger? That's my question, right? Like gold and silver are safe haven assets with times of geopolitical turmoil. But even if we do get a period of turmoil within the United States, doesn't it just feel weird? Like that we know that we're going into this weird, I will just call it a weird election. This is not a political show. All right. But it is the got to be a, the weirdest election we've ever seen. And there's a lot of high, high uh, tension on both sides right now as we head into this. But doesn't it feel like things are like super calm? Are we going to go through this without any like, is this going to be a nothing burger? That's my question. I'm waiting, right? I'm waiting to see how this plays out. But it feels like to me, does it feel like to you that right now it's been almost a a nothing burger. I mean, it's like we got all these things going on. The bank term funding program, the reverse repo program, the commercial real estate, residential real estate, uh, the national debt, right? The national deficit, a crazy election. We have war in Israel, war in the Ukraine, big tensions in, in Asia with China and, and everywhere else, and tensions in North Korea. It's like everything is is feels crazy right? But there's, but nothing's really going on. So like here we sit, right? Does it feel like that? Is it the calm before the storm? I don't know. Am I a doom and gloomer? I No, I don't think I'm a doom and gloomer. No, I don't want to be doom and gloom. Uh, it, it just feels like though, when you take an assessment of everything going on out there, does it feel like the calm before the storm? Let's all participate a little bit, huh? Calm? Type calm if you think we're in the calm before the storm. I guess storms always do show up, right? And a lot of times there are things that we aren't anticipating. That's why I throw out the prospect of are we are are we are we underestimating the potential for a depression, right? A really serious, significant uh, financial. I mean, who knows, right? We hear about people talking about like like nuclear war, but not real nuclear war, but like financial nuclear war. And especially now with, with what's going on, this bifurcation that we're having on the planet, that it's maybe um, a, a risk that a lot of us aren't, you know, we haven't, people didn't worry about September 11th happening, right? It was a surprise. People aren't worried about a, and I'm not, you know, saying that I think this is going to happen, but I just feel strange. Everybody's asleep. Everybody's asleep. Have you noticed that? Most other people, you're not, most likely, right? Because you like to talk about these things. And again, it's not, we're just talking about the facts uh, and trying to dig through and put together the forest through the trees, the crumbs that are left. But most people are just plain asleep. You know, you're not asleep. I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Okay. Don't forget uh, for our winner of the, of the giveaway. Let me see if I can, I'm not used to this phone. Unspoken words, 2010, send me an email and I'll send you the code and we'll get that silver shipped out to you. If he or she does not claim the prize within 96 hours, we will do it again. We'll pick a new winner. So unspoken words, the clock is ticking. You got about uh, 95 hours and 30 minutes to get back to us. It's Valentine's Day. Um, goodbye, dwellers. Goodbye, supplemental nickel stacking. Sassy, oh my gosh. Thank you to all of the moderators. Guys, let's all type 8888 for the moderators because they do a great job helping out this channel. Absolutely, no doubt about it. I mean, this would not be possible without their help. They make these live streams what they are. Thank you to everyone who's here. I see Jake from Jake's Custom Parts. I see Coin Shop Chris. I see Sassy Silver. Uh, I don't think Craig is here today. I don't know if Susie. Hey, Annie Oakley's here. Good to see you, Annie. Good to see all you guys. Has anybody got a question? 
I'm feeling energetic. What the heck? You want a question about romance or a question about anything? Type question mark like this. Uh, it should be, where is the question mark? In the bottom right side of your keyboard and press enter. And then give me your question. James, Sassy Silver, thank you, Basement Dwellers. Thomas, 888. No, I did not. I would bought silver uh, before yesterday. Um, so that should have been a great indication that we were going to have a smashdown day. I bought silver twice in the last two weeks, <clears throat> not including yesterday. So I don't look at it. I don't like it. To, I mean, you know, I, it's impossible to time the market. I try to buy when I think I thought premiums were low. That's why I, I would buy silver. I mean, to me, I thought the price was low, generally speaking, but I knew premiums were low, right? Like I know that premiums, I guess they could go lower, but they're like a third of what they were a year ago, it feels like to me, or even a quarter of what they were a year ago. So I bought silver. Yep, yeah, it went down. I, I wish I would have waited. I don't know. I think I paid like $25.36 excuse me, for some um, UK Britannias. And maybe yesterday I could have got them for $25 each. But I don't know, to me, when I'm paying $25 for a sovereign minted coin, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Uh-oh. Has Yes, the drawing took place, Astro, and um, Unspoken Words 2010 is the winner. But if he doesn't claim it in 96 hours, we will, uh, we will pull again. Don't time the market, yes. Hold on, I want to see what other questions we have here. I may have missed them. See above. Scott Rickards, question, okay. Did uh, No, yes, I already answered that one. Uh, romance equals gold, yeah. What did I get for Susie got me a box of chocolates. <laughs> so, thank you. Um, and Susie, my sweetheart. All right, guys, we're going to log off. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. Happy Valentine's Day, and have a great rest of your day. Be nice to yourself, number one, right? Be your own sweetheart, and that'll help you be a sweetheart to everybody else. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.